The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Felix, the Raspberry Pi No HDMI project went over really well. Yes, it was a really fun build and, and really I, nice too. I think this is one of the coolest portables that we've built on the show. Yeah, you know what, a lot of people have asked me, where can I get one of those? And I'm like, um, well, you gotta make it. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of intricate hand soldering involved. I mean, we're pretty good at soldering because we do it all the time, but even then it takes you mm -hmm. know, a lot of time even for us. So I was thinking in today's episode, what if we took this and turned it into an all-in-one PCB? That is a great idea. So instead of having to do all that soldering, people could just buy the board, like perhaps this was a kit or mm -hmm. something on Kickstarter that people could buy. They buy the board, they attach the screen, an A+, and a battery, and boom, they pretty much have this, but without any of the annoying soldering. Hey, that would be awesome. Yeah, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's Priests. Regrettable Acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, I have the basics of the PCB laid out. So there's a thing called Fusion Sync, since uh, Fusion 360 and Eagle are both owned by Autodesk. I can actually push this to Fusion and it will connect to a linked design. Although the push actually is kind of slow. Also, I'm not sure what's gonna happen because all these parts are floating. Maybe I should bring them back in the radius. Wait, that's not the right word to use. I bring them back within the fold, so to speak. So I'm gonna make sure everything is within the shape. And the cool thing is this will actually uh, synchronize in a Fusion 360 design. So you can, uh, yeah, you basically have your Fusion 360 design based off your PCB or vice versa. You can have a PCB based off a shape in Fusion 360. And then you're allegedly able to even move the components within Fusion and then come back here and they'll have moved. I haven't gotten that part to work yet, uh, but you know, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. It seems like it's still a beta feature. I mean, if they get it working really well, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, let's just get everything in place. Uh, one thing we'll have to think about when we start laying out this board is making sure that there are no tall components on the front side because that would affect the screen's uh, position. Uh, you know, we talked about having the screen, you know, what, the surface of it is 0.2 inches above the surface of the PCB, but some of these um, inductors might actually exceed that height, and that wouldn't be good. I feel like I'm Bob Ross. I'm just randomly dragging things around the screen while you listen to me talk about things. Happy little butterflies. The clouds... Clouds of cloudiness cloud my heart with clouds and stuff. All right, everything's within the boundaries of the PCB. Let's save it. Fusion sync, out of sync, push. It's basically you push to the other program and you pull from the other program. So it's kind of like GitHub, but with two programs. This part actually takes a while because it actually goes in and makes sketches and bodies for everything, which is a little ridiculous. So once this is done, we can load it up in Fusion 360. I pushed it to Fusion 360. I'm going to load up the project and see if it updated. Now, none of the parts that were used for this have 3D representations, which is a new thing that Eagle can do. If they did, they'd actually be rendered in 3D in Fusion. But Fusion will do a slight representation of them. Oh, look, wait, we have a few 3D parts. Wow. Uh, yeah, but this is our board representation, so... What we can do is we can actually design our enclosure around this, which is kind of cool. Um, this header, the um, Raspberry Pi header, that should actually be on the back. I thought I reversed that. Oh, yeah, take a look at the uh, USB here. See it? It will actually cut out the holes and do the vias and everything. Although if you look closely, this is clearly an image. See that? The copper area? But still pretty cool. But when they do have the 3D data, like they render everything. They show you how the part goes through the board. Oh, this is the uh, header for the LCD. So I had trouble getting some of this stuff to move. Like, allegedly, you can go down here into uh, uh, Edit, Board, and then you can move components. So, like, if you're like, oh, this needs to be up here. Now, for some reason, it's not allowing me to move it yet, but, I don't. again, this is in beta. But that would be pretty cool because you could actually, like, move around your switches based off your case design and then push it back down to Eagle and then everything would be, you know, your, your PCB would be lined up how you want it to be physically. I brought Felix in to 
tell me what he was doing with some of these schematics. So we changed the Raspberry Pi connections. Looks like you had one that was actually a Raspberry Pi library. Yeah. I ripped it out and I turned it into a surface mount version. That'd be nice. Unfortunately, we had to flip it to make it work. And the surface mount version of the part, its origin point is up here. See that arrow? You know, I'm just thinking, what if you go in and edit that part and move the center? Oh, would I have to re-import it? I wrote down the value of the old part, so that would make it handier. I wouldn't I, have to do math. I presume it's already in your library. You could just edit it and then... Yeah, I wonder if that would be a problem like for pick and place too. It's like, oh, that's the center, but it's not. Yeah, you want to give it a shot? Let's see. All right. Felix, I loaded up that part. Now, we can't move the origin as far as I know, but we can move everything around the origin. So look, the origin is right there. When you design a part, you should have the part in the center of the origin. Let's see if we can move it. Move. One thing that's kind of tricky about um, Eagle that I've noticed yeah. is to do um, hotkeys, you gotta have a, there's, there's a separate hotkey configuration for the library editor and the separate one for the board editor and a separate one for the schematic editor. That's lame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. Looks like that's centered. Uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Looks like this is just a oh, 50 mil pitch. Have I ever told you how much I hate mills? No, you haven't. Is, I, think, I think mills are kind of like saying 5,200 as opposed to 5,200. Uh, I'm so triggered. <laughs> <laughs> so when you design a part, you're supposed to uh, design it from the center out. So the pick and place machine knows, hey, that's where I pick up the part. All right, let's see if we can, uh, I want to be to update. Let's update all, just in case. So let's go back over here. And that was the Pinhead Library. So it's someone who likes pinball machines, apparently. Are you ever going to get a pinball machine, Felix? Yeah, the likely, the, it's likely that someday. I will someday. Yeah. But, not, but not now, because someday is not now. That's right. All right, let's import this part. And let's just take a look at it in the board view before we do anything else. Hey, look, it's Voila. got the center point where it needs to be. I did notice when we placed this, so the, you know, if we're looking at the board, you know, straight on like this, this is how it looks. So we know up here we have 5-5 five, five ground on the pie. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we get that here. So I think this header is kind of mirrored of what we think it would be. So I'm going to mirror it here in the schematic view. I'm going to drag it up here and attach it to where your old part was. And that should, yeah, it's always good to move it around to make sure it's connected. So we're going to look for 5-5 five, five ground in the upper right. So let's go down into here again. Let's click on it, then let's put it to the back of the unit. Let's rotate it. Look at that, you're in the center now. Yes, that's good. Let's make sure that V-Sync is still where it needs to be. All right, so this is uh, blue, so that means that's, it's on the other underside of the board, so it's like we're looking at it like this. Okay, now let's just, uh, type it in, and now we can type in the same value that the other part was in, and it should go in the same place that it needs to be. <laughs> Yay! Do you want to go over some of these other sheets here? Sure. So we got the LED boost, the 3.3 volt regulation. Do we need 3.3 volt regulation for this? I wonder if we could just steal it off of the Pi. Eh, that might be a little flaky. So this is taking five volts and knocking it down to three, right? To power yeah. the circuitry of the screen. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. Oh, so button matrix. Oh yeah, so uh, I don't think you were here when I did it, but see how the um, <laughs> those pads are the only things that have 3D parts or one of the few things yeah. that have 3D parts. And those are the on the original design, those are the, the vias that we had for attaching the rolls and columns. So we don't want that. So down here, we can remove these single post headers, right? Yep. Just bam, bam, bam. Yep. Bam, 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 bam. But we also need to make sure that we still have the nets labeled. Cal zero. Oh, so you've got their, their name. Yeah, there's here. labels right down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's connected. All right. You know what I'm thinking now? It's just the part where Felix and I have to like get on the same page. <laughs> Literally, because, you know, it's like, which page are we on in Eagle? Um, is this page four or three or five? This is four of six. Another page is the USB hub, but I think you wanted to scrap that, right? Ah, uh, what, what's your feeling on it? Mm, well, there's nothing there. Th that's, that's my feeling on it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now that you, you said um, the board would be on the edge and the USB would be sticking out the side. Yeah, and then if we're having people wire things that aren't already on the header... The, the more we can minimize that, the better. You know, maybe it's just the audio they have to wire up with some couple wires. <sighs> I'm okay with it. This is the audio amplifier? Yes. Okay. So these headers we could remove as well because we don't need them. Oh, yeah. It's the amplifier, button matrix we just checked out, TFT connector, charge controllers. This is a charge and boost, right? Both of them are on there. 
Oh, was, oh th one of these is the uh, basically the power output, right? Yeah, so we can get rid of that. Oh yeah, because it's at, well, this is like a, the Adafruit 1000C charger. Mm -hmm. Do we have one? We have one laying around. Oh, right there, right, saw... right, right by that cartridge. Oh no, yeah, because this one. is like you know like a cell phone charger, so we don't need the big A here. We can get rid of it. See the resistors on the data lines here? Mm -hmm. That's uh, for cell phone charging. So bye 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 baby bye bye, and I wrote her a letter. So what do you think about Iron Maiden, Felix? Are they your favorite group? Um, yeah. I think you should go to options, because this is driving me nuts. What? Just go to options. This is the... I have it set up the way I like. Oh, jeez. Fine. Options, <laughs> which one? Assign. Oh, oh you, already, you, already have, you already have control G. Oh, group it and delete it? Yeah. All right. Control... And then you should do... Uh, also, you should uh, make a control D shortcut as well. Why can't I delete it? Because you, you got to right click, delete group. That's dumb. <laughs> we still need the micro USB for charging, so we'll leave that one. Why are there so many headers? <clears throat> What's this header? That's, oh, that's I think the that's controller the, for the amplifier? Yeah, no, one of them's going to be for the amplifier, and one of them's going to be for the circuit, uh, the power uh, regulator. All right, well, I'll, I'll get rid of those as we go along. Laying out the board, uh, we have a couple areas here. Over here, we have the charge input on a micro USB. It's going to the charge controller. There are going to be four LEDs above it. There are four lights. It will give you the charge status, if the unit's on or not, and if you're having an undervolt issue. Got a boost over here to uh, boost up the LiPo battery voltage to five volts. I haven't really laid that out yet. I'm putting in pretty much everything on the rear surface, so the only thing on the front will be the tack switches and the LEDs. Over here, I'm wiring up the TTL RGB. It's a little, little tricky to do because I have to go around this slit that I made for the ribbon cable. I actually made the slit a little bit smaller as well to help me with my routing. Getting there pretty well. Um, I'm drawing a keep out area for the USB port. That's indicated by this uh, white line here. Um, the main thing I'm worried about is there's an inductor on the, uh, the 24 volt boost circuit for the light. I just want to make sure that doesn't hit the <laughs> USB port on the Pi. So I'll probably put that around there or something. I think I can probably make this board even smaller, like I can basically bring this side in when the time comes. I'm not sure how that will affect the fusion sink, I guess we'll find out. But you know, I can shave off a good half inch from the board there and make it even cheaper. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to do the audio amplifier stuff probably up in this area. So I'm going to keep everything separate. We got the LCD and the boost circuit for the light here, charge over here, matrixing diodes here, and the audio uh, volume knob and everything will be up here. So this will probably take me uh, another few hours, but uh, should be pretty cool in the end. Okay, progress update. I have the uh, 24 volt LED boost circuit in place. It's gonna fit right above the USB port. Well, the inductor will actually sit here because it's taller than the USB port, but there should be enough room for everything. Uh, I did it all single-sided too, why not? No vias. Uh, I might need a few ground clearance uh, checks, but we should be all right. That pretty much finishes up everything for the LCD connector. I mean, there's some grounds here, but we'll complete those with the, uh, the flood fill. I think I'm going to do the uh, boost circuit next. This is over here on the power side. And then once I have that in place, I'll probably finish up with the audio amplifier and then uh, probably the key matrix. And if there's any empty board space here, I think I'll just put a bunch of vias, you know, if people want to like solder in their own chips or something. I probably can reduce the board size on the left here. There's nothing over here, so I might as well just make it smaller to make it, you know, cheaper. Yeah, but uh, should work out pretty well, liking it so far. And again, I'm trying to put pretty much every component on the bottom of it, except for the LEDs and the switches, or the buttons, I should say. Oh, and we'll also need a power switch that enables the boost circuit. I'll have to add that as well. I'll probably put that down here by the charge jack just to keep things consistent. Although I could possibly put it on the side. I can't really put it up here because the top of the unit, there's no PCB now or there won't be one. I'll figure out a good place to put it. But the charge jack is centered, so it's just like your modern phone. Okay, I finished the design. Let's take a look at it. We have our entry point for the TFT LCD right here. 
Uh, it appears as blue because it's on the uh, bottom side of the PCB, along with the um, three volt regulator for it and the boost circuit for the backlight itself. That's all contained here. This um, square silk screen shape, that's where the USB port will be on the Raspberry Pi A+. I marked it so I can make sure the taller components such as this inductor would not intersect with it. Up here we have the audio amplifier. I have it hard coded to a setting of I think uh, 12 dB boost. Uh, if it's not enough, we can always change it in the future or possibly put some pads out so it can be adjusted by the user. Right above that is the potentiometer volume control. So basically we have to bridge over the left and right audio from the board. It goes into the potentiometer, which attenuates it, and then it takes it down into the amplifier. So basically the amplifier always just amplifies whatever it's given. You use the potentiometer to change the actual voltage level going to it. And then we have all of our switches for the matrix. Each one has a diode. Then this is like a cell phone speaker that I found. It's actually spring loaded, but I drew the closest approximation as I could in Eagle to make this part with pads so we can solder it in place. Another one down here, so it is in stereo. Then here we have the charge controller and the five volt boost. And I kept all of this as far to the right or bottom of the board as possible so that there's space here for the battery pack. So we have our large cap and our inductor in the same plane as the switch and the uh, USB port. So yeah, oh, I also added a bunch of uh, <laughs> holes in case you want to bolt your own circuitry and then there's a uh, power and ground rails brought close to it. So if you want to attach five volts, you just bridge this. If you want 3.3, .3, you bridge that. And then you have like this V power rail here, you know, just in case. And you, you can fit like a, a dip 18 there. I'm sorry. You could fit a dip 16 here uh, pretty easily. All right, well, that should be everything. All right, I'm gonna send this off to Osh Park. We'll wait a couple of weeks and then I'll have Felix stuff in the parts. Well, we've got our boards in from Osh Park. I'm gonna put the parts on here. We have our, our header, our header that connects to the Raspberry Pi, our header that connects to the TFT screen. We got our support circuitry for the backlight driver, the charge controller, voltage regulator, and the amplifier over here. A bunch of uh, capacitors and resistors, our switch matrix on the front, our speakers, and over here we're gonna have um, the potentiometer for the volume control. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuffed, and then we'll do some tests while Ben is working on some other things. So does this boot up if I plug in the battery? Yes, it will. All right. So one thing we'd have to change, for you, I know you wanted a quick disconnect here. You have to manually wire the audio from the headphone jack to the amplifier. So Felix has a quick disconnect here, but if you didn't have that, um, this would be, basically this whole area would be open for, you know, whatever size battery you want. And down here, see how we put the switches and the inductors and the tall stuff down here all at the bottom? Again, giving you as much battery room as possible. So we just got a standard JST connector. Right there, let's flip it over, turn it on, here it comes. So in the original version of this, we used the um, volume control in RetroPie, but it yeah. didn't work all that well. So this one, we just have it all the way up and we go through potentiometer. I don't think it, was, uh, it didn't work very well, it's just buried in the menu. That was my... Oh, uh, it also didn't work very well. Okay. If you went below so 100, it was right. like... <laughs> okay. So I did change some of the arrangement of the buttons. I don't actually remember which, what these buttons do, because it was like, what, two weeks ago? Well, the, the labels are on there, they're like sideways. Oh. I think, the, well, actually, they're in Oh, yeah, sideways. escape, F4, control, delete. I didn't even put any effort into the silk screen. Mm. Basically, we designed this and ordered it. <laughs> it, <was laughs> uh, it looks like the, um, see this LED? That is an undervolt uh, mm. warning for the boot circuit. So there might be something up with that, although everything seems to be working. And I did notice uh, we, when we had it hooked up to the charger, the battery went up in voltage a little bit, but not as much as it should, so we should probably check into that. But the screen appears to be working correctly, and have yeah. you checked over the matrix? Does it work correctly? Yep. Cool. Well, that's all we have for today, but to recap, we took our original Raspberry Pi no HDMI hand-wired project that looked like this and redesigned it into a convenient all-in-one board that you can plug components into. So if this was a pre-stuffed board, and all you had to do was add the screen, the Pi, and the battery, would you buy it? 
please let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Crazy people don't know that they're crazy. I know I'm crazy, therefore I'm not crazy. Who are you? I'm Matt Urkel. I'm the winner of the Hack Like Heck contest. What are you doing here? I had to come in here and get my zen on. Maybe we could all use some more zen. Should we build something to give us zen? Well, I was thinking we could build a robot zen garden using CNC parts. Okay, I guess we probably have the equipment to make that happen.